even government agents sent to spy on her, understood her appeal. She is womanly, a remarkable orator, tremendously sincere, one wrote in a report. She is doing tremendous damage. At home in New York, unemployed workers, trade unionists, and socialists kept up a daily round of rallies and demonstrations. One of the biggest, the revolt of the unemployed, was brutally suppressed. Conflicts between capital and labor escalated. In Lawrence, Massachusetts, striking workers faced the rifle butts of the state militia. At the Standard Oil Company in Bayonne, New Jersey, workers striking for humane treatment on the job and a living wage were shot by hired guards. And in Ludlow, Colorado, striking coal miners and their families were gunned down by the local militia. It seemed that whatever happened, you could get away with if you were rich. You could do anything. You could, you could kill women and children, and nothing would happen to you. Ah, there you go, tough. And so it, it just created this desire to strike back. Anarchists have taught people that violence is justified in the struggle of labor against capital. Labor will ultimately knock the last master off the back of the last slave. Things were so bad that the radical reaction was in an inverse proportion. The more violent and dangerous life was, the more violent and dangerous the radicals would be. They were always a mirror of disaster, of the, of the ongoing disaster. They were more extreme then, and there was less rueful historical knowledge about the final counterproductive nature of violence. Goldman's position on violence was never totally clear. She rejected violence intellectually, but always her sympathies went to the motivations of those who committed acts of violence. Violence never has and never will bring constructive results, she wrote. But my mind and my knowledge of life tell me that change will always be violent. She felt that violence sometimes was necessary because of the implacable opposition of governments and industrialists to workers. Over time, she recognized that almost invariably, however, those acts were counterproductive. You are giving them a sword if you talk about using a sword yourself. In 1915, Alexander Berkman started a publication of his own. He named his new magazine, The Blast. Goldman went back on the road with Ben Reitman, this time to campaign for birth control. This tour would be their most successful ever. It was also quite illegal. Talking about sex and contraceptives in public was a crime. She sees birth control as a social issue. For her, it was almost a sense of freedom for the woman to have uh, whatever relationships they wanted and whatever life they wanted. It was critical. And it was also critical in terms of social change, of empowering poorer women. In February 1916, Goldman was arrested in New York and sentenced to 15 days in the workhouse. Ten months later, Reitman was arrested. He received a six-month sentence, the longest sentence served in the United States by a birth control advocate. After his release, Reitman confessed he'd fallen in love with a young woman he'd met in New York two years before. I had been seduced by an ordinary man's desire for a home, a wife, and a child, he wrote. 
his love affair with Goldman was over. In 1917, Ben Reitman and Anna Martindale were married. Goldman was stunned. I felt unutterably weary, possessed only of a desire to get away somewhere and forget the failure of my personal life, to forget even the cruel urge to struggle for an ideal. Between the summer of 1916 and the spring of 1917, the mood of the country darkened. The war in Europe was dragging into its third year, a year of military stalemates, trench warfare, and mud. When America entered World War I in April 1917, Goldman saw it as a disaster. You cannot support any country in war when innocent, as she would see it, men would be slaughtered. Innocent families would have brothers, husbands taken away from them and slaughtered. No, you can't do that. that that's the basis of your anarchism. The idea of nationalism appalled her. She thought nationalism was a big scam. Her point of view was that these wars were a matter of property interests of, of the upper classes that were sending the working classes out to fight for them. And that didn't make sense for a butcher's assistant in Hamburg to fight a butcher's assistant in London. Goldman was far from alone in her opposition to the war. Dozens of organizations throughout the country had argued the war was morally wrong. The First World War was marked by the insecurity of the administration. I mean, this is an administration that promised not to enter the war. And once it decided otherwise, it became very, very defensive, insecure, and therefore insisted on consensus, consensus by any means. We're not a liberal society when we go to war. Uh, during the Civil War, we weren't. Abraham Lincoln, one of our great presidents, arrested hundreds of people who wrote against the war. And during the First World War, uh, it became one. I mean, it was a combination of vigilantism and official repression. In June, the Espionage Act went into effect. It decreed stiff fines and prison terms for anyone who obstructed the draft. A year later, the sedition law threatened those who defied the government with expulsion. J. Edgar Hoover, a 23-year-old law clerk enjoying a meteoric rise in the Justice Department, collected information on foreign-born radicals. Hoover was anxious to bring what he called intellectual perverts like war resistors and anarchists, to justice. He reserved a special loathing for Goldman. Once again, Emma Goldman and Alexander Berkman joined forces to organize resistance. Their lectures drew large, contentious crowds. In May 1917, they launched the No Conscription League, it opposed all wars waged by capitalist governments. We believe that the militarization of America is an evil that far outweighs any good that may come from America's participation in the war. We will resist conscription by every means in our power. In its short life, the League organized three protest rallies. <laughs> 